What sort of yurt sizes and where should you set up? The most traditional sizes are the four wall, the five wall and the six wall, which means 16 feet or five meters, 19 feet or six meter, and 21, 22 feet, uh, around six meters, 60, six meter, 80. Those are the yurts that are mostly used today in Mongolia, year round, in one of this planet's harshest climate. It is, however, a dry climate. So we had to adapt and select our materials carefully so they will resist in a more humid climate. Mongolian yurt is made mostly of all natural material. And that's very important to know. It's all handmade. So it starts, of course, with the woodwork that's all split by hand. The roof rafters, so it's aspen or, or larch. The rest of the wood parts are made of Siberian pine, a white pine. Horsehair ropes, made of horse mane. There's a first cotton liner. We then have a complete layer of a felt, felt insulation. It's basically sheep wool, so extremely efficient. And on top, we have a cotton-based canvas. We do add a layer of a house wrap in most cases here, and it's recommended to take care of any excess of humidity. But these natural materials are actually extremely efficient when it comes to keeping the yurt warm in winter, but also keeping it cool in the summer. The yurt will love to be used. So don't leave your yurt unattended for six months. It's probably better and easy to take it down and store it. Taking down the yurt is very easy. Basically, you're going just the opposite way from setting it up. You will do it in a way that it's easy to reset up. So folding the covers, folding the felts, and keeping all the ropes on the walls so you will save a lot of time the next time you set up. It is very important if you store your yurt that all the covers and the felts are dry. If you store the walls, make sure they're all stored respecting the wall curve once they're stacked. And usually Mongolians always put the tono on top to respect the yurt's most sacred part. If you use your yurt to live in, that's certainly the best scenario because it will be constantly ventilated, heated, and that's how your yurt will last the best and the longest. It is crucial that the yurt is well ventilated and installed as much as possible in a ventilated area. If possible, also getting some sunshine. Uh, try not to install your yurt in the midst of the woods with bushes just against it in a place where you get constant rains because you might get into mold troubles or, uh, or have to change your cover uh, more often. There are ways to take care of this. If you don't use your yurt regularly, there are different ways to ventilate it. If you use it, you can simply lift the sides. Otherwise, we've seen people putting vents in their platforms, even having a little a uh, fan, uh, it could be a solar powered fan, so that, that creates a natural draft with the dome. We've had people cutting a panel of the door at the bottom of the door and putting mosquito netting so that you can have ventilation while you're away. There's a very easy way to ventilate your yurt in the summer. That's how Mongolians do. They will roll their covers, take the rope that's coming from the top and create a gap. You can do that on three sides and you will see it's almost air conditioning. It really cools the year down, creating a natural draft with the dome. If you place your mosquito netting here at the beginning, that will stop any bugs coming in. When it comes to usage and, and sizes, uh, a lot of the people that decide to, to move to a yurt think they, they take the size of their house or their current apartment and they say, oh, okay, I'm going to divide it by two. And that amounts to a very, very large yurt. It's a different art of living in a yurt. You've got this beautiful circular space. And we often recommend rather than going to a very large yurt, which we sell as well, we sell yurts up to 40 foot diameter or more, that's a 12 meter diameter. Rather than doing that, why don't you buy a smaller yurt? If you really need the space, connect it to another yurt of the smaller size or same size. It's an easy thing to do. It'll be 
probably cheaper and a lot easier to maintain and heat also. The reason those yurts are so efficient, it's because of their compact shape and the good insulation. Traditional yurts are very low at the wall, so they're aerodynamic and it's a smaller volume to keep warm. Still, I'm 6'5", of course I have to bend to enter this five wall yurt, but as soon as I do one step towards the center, I've got already enough headroom. So it's, a, it, it's still a, a wonderful space, even though it looks very compact from the exterior. Yurts are used to live in, about 20% of our clientele do, and happily. Otherwise, as a cottage, as an annex to your home, for your mother-in-law or your teenager that wants his own space, yoga studio, as a bed and breakfast, anything goes. And the beauty about this structure, it's extremely flexible. You're not stuck with a huge mortgage. This is still an investment, of course, by the time you've put a platform in or, uh, or your furniture and a stove. However, you're not stuck to one place. You can move. You're a nomad now. And in the worst case, if it wasn't for you, they do have a very good resale value.